Now in the last video we took a look at how we could actually prove a particular limit using this rigorous definition. And I'm actually going to leave example number three here as another question for you to try to go practice with here on your own. Now, keep in mind that the solution to this particular question is going to look very similar to the solution that I sketched out above, but it's just going to be posted in the notes that are located up on the Blackboard calendar. But do take some time to try to complete this. If you need to, pause the video now and then go look at the solution. And when we come back, we're going to take a look at the very end of this section. Okay, well hopefully you actually did go ahead and try this problem out. You should have seen that it's very, very similar again to everything that we did here in example number two. You probably just ended up with a slightly different value for your delta based on ultimately what was left after this inequality. Now, there are lots more problems to go ahead and practice with in the associated worksheets, and I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. What's also kind of interesting is that we can come up though with definitions, rigorous definitions, for what it would look like to actually have limits that approach infinity. That is where infinity is going to be the answer to one of our limits. So take a look here. This is actually the rigorous definition. And I'll give you a loose idea as to how this works. Suppose that f is a function defined on some open interval that contains a, except possibly at a. Then we could write that the limit is going to be infinite, that is the graph goes up towards infinity whenever the following holds. Okay, before I read the statement, let's go ahead and just quickly down here draw a picture of a graph that's going to go up towards infinity at a particular value. So maybe here's a value of a, like where an asymptote occurs, and maybe I have a graph that goes like this. Right? Maybe it goes up like that. So I can see that this is going up towards infinity. Here, clearly the limit of my function is going upwards. Now, how do I prove that it goes upwards? What does that mean? Well, what that would really mean is that if you're going to tell me that the limit's infinite, you're going to tell me that this graph keeps going higher and higher and higher. It goes as high as I could ever want. Like, the graph should at some point pass a hundred, and then pass a million, and then pass a billion, and a trillion, and like a trillion to the trillionth power, eventually. But of course, I would only be able to get high enough on this picture if I was going to inch close enough to the value of a. So take a look here. Notice that there's no more epsilon here. Instead, there's something kind of similar but different. Here we're going to say for every number m greater than zero, and m is going to kind of act like a threshold almost like a, like a high jump bar in like track and field. We're going to be curious, can the function ever get past this value of m? Well, very clearly on this function, yes, it can. And the way that I would be able to determine um, when I get past that is by thinking about where on the x-axis I have to be in order to get y values that begin to exceed the, that uh, horizontal bar. And so again, there should be a value of delta, a distance that I go out to the left and to the right, so that if I pick an x inside that interval, my y value is big enough. So essentially, how close to a do I need to be in order to get big enough? And you can actually um, see that there are going to be ways that you can uh, determine or, or uh, similarly define what's going to happen when you go towards negative infinity. Now, in our class, I'm actually not going to go ahead and require that you actually uh, master the skills of writing out um, these sorts of rigorous arguments with limits that go towards positive or negative infinity. Instead, we're going to primarily focus on examples like we saw in number two and number three, and also what you're going to see on the worksheets. So if you are interested, though, in learning more about this, it is very advantageous, especially for those of you that are going to take a lot of math classes, and definitely, most certainly, if you're, if you're planning on majoring in mathematics. This is a very important concept that will continue to show up in later courses, and may be worth your time to dig in on a bit more. And I'd be happy to talk about that with you if you're interested.